Robots Radio presents... Today's chat is brought to you by, well, all of your support. Through the patronage you provide the Focus Fire chat team through Podbean's crowdfunding, we are able to provide you with the weekly podcast as well as the website and other aspects of Focus Fire chat. If you have any interest in becoming a patron of the FFC, please be sure to visit our website and click on the support link. Even a single dollar helps. And for those of you who are already patrons, thank you again for your generosity. You may have heard the whispers of guardians gathering in the shadows, exploring the mysteries of this world and the worlds which surround us. We are all in search of truth. Sometimes we need to focus that search. Focus that fire! And so we come together! Welcome to Focused Fire Chat! Welcome to Focus Fire Chat, recorded live on July 24th, 2020, over on twitch.tv slash Focus Fire Chat. As always, I want to give a big shout out to our live chat here with us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us once again. This week's episodes are going to be focused around exploring information regarding Titan, not the not the subclass or the class, the moon. Uh, This particular episode will serve as what we have come to call the intro session of the week's exploration. Before we go any further, however, let's run through a quick introduction of who all we have with us on the show. As always, this is your host, Blue Crew 86. And this is the girl who has a new cookbook, Green Eyed Music Lover. I have wave splitter. There's alcohol recipes in this cookbook as well as food. <laughs> this great. might have convinced me that I need to get a copy of this. This might have convinced you that Anna would be okay with you getting a copy of this more. So don't don't fool yourself. You weren't wanting this. No, that's that's fair. Anna. That's fair. <laughs> well, and last but definitely not the least in the hot seat as guest co-host, we have our good friend, professional Ted. Ted, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Yee. <laughs> Always, always, always good. Yeah. Well, and I actually, so. you know, now that we have that out of the way, I want to shift the focus over to Ted. So usually with these intro sessions, we set aside some time to get to lo- know a little more about our guests. And Ted, you've been on with us, so you kind of are sure. prepared for Green's upcoming interrogation. Yes. <laughs> Let me just say this before we start. <laughs> Blue changed the question list. <laughs> So listen, I tried I tried to make it a little bit more five W's and how. Sure. Look, we do a cocktail knowledge of our guests and a cocktail knowledge (laughs) of our topic and we're done. Okay, like we're asking existential questions. Like who are you? Who are you? Who are you, Ted? I am a professional, as my name says. (laughs) Yeah. See, this is where the, this is the top tier answers that I've come to expect. <laughs> yes, I love it. So there you go. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so go ahead and just shout out your different uh, social medias and links to everything that you got, at least that you're willing to share with people. Because I know that I do not let people know my Facebook or anything <laughs> like that, mainly because I don't use it. So it. Um, I'm mostly on Twitter uh, at professional Ted. I did start a YouTube channel with my friend Andy, and that is Alter Ego over on YouTube, and we discuss uh, gaming news with a focus on Destiny. So there's a few videos over there, and it's been pretty fun doing that. How long have you been doing that with them? Well, pretty much since the shutdown happened, we've been kind of uh, focusing on on doing that. We haven't uh, produced videos that have been out for very long, probably... Sure. Mid June or so, and then it's been about once, once or twice a week since then. Nice, that's actually quite a bit. I know that those videos for every like five minutes that you put into it, you're at least doing twenty to thirty minutes of actual editing. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. But I, I'm usually up at night anyway, so it doesn't bother me. That's cool. And what was the YouTube channel? Alter Ego over on YouTube. Nice. And so you said that you're doing that in the community. Is there any other thing that you've got going on that you have kind of want to shout out here, kind of get some some peeps from our show to your show? No, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I give Twitter opinions occasionally, but so does everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the new Twitter versity, right? Like yeah. it, you, it used to be YouTube versity, and now it's Twitter. It's its own. I don't even it's know what beast. to call it anymore. It is a beast. Mm-hmm. It is a pain in the tuchus. <laughs> but uh, 
when did you become interested in allure? I know we kind of went over this last time that you were on, but I'm I'm curious to get that story rehashed because it's been a while. So I've played from the beginning of Destiny. Uh, the first mm-hmm. year, I wasn't too interested in it. Like I played it; it was fun. But then I moved on pretty quickly. Um, but when the Taken King came out, that's when I really started to get into Destiny and everything surrounding the Hive and Oryx and who they are. And that's kind of when I went back and did all the Dark Below stuff and learned more about Crota. Yeah. And it's really the Hive that, that drew me in and the Taken and just everything surrounding them just fascinated me. I felt like there was more to explore and I just I really liked the character. You know, that actually makes me pretty excited that we were able to pick Titan as the subject that we were going over yes. with you since so much of Titan is actually related to the hive. Mm-hmm. So it'll be fun to dive into that. Cool. So you said that you started you when exactly did the hive fascination begin? You said Dark Below or No, Taking King. But then I, I went I went gotcha. back to the Dark Below after that and kinda of caught myself nice. up. Yeah. Absolutely. And I already got where you're... Blue, these are in the wrong order. (laughs) Let's see here. Already answered that, already answered that, already answered that. These are not my questions. Remind us what class you play. I am Titan, primarily. Nice, nice. (laughs) That has been my second recently. I used to threaten to play Titan all the way in D1, and then I switched to Warlock as my second recently, and then I've kind of gone back and picked my titan back up a little bit though i was going through her collections today and they're they're missing i have not played her hardly enough Mm. yeah i was a warlock main in d1 and then in d2 i just liked playing the shield titan more so that's that's my main subclass what do you think about the new stasis powers from the video that we got i'm ready to be my my fridge boy (laughs) which okay so Tell me what the Titans got. I know Hunter's got the like the, the wall walls that they can put up, and and but they've got the shuriken. Get? So the the Titans, from what it looked like, they get like these fists that have like spike ice all around them, and then they slam it, and then it kind of goes forward, and then like ice pillars come up from there. It's Hulk it's smash. Very earth- yeah, it's it's Hulk. Yeah. Smash. It's, it's the Hulk smash to go with the Captain American shield. It's kind of like the so, aftershock uh, super from D one, mm-hmm. where you slammed and mm-hmm. it shoots forward, but with ice. Okay, that's cool because it's it's got the striker effect, but more air of, area of effect than and I think a lot more ways. range from what we saw anyway. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't really get to watch that closely when I was able to pick it up a little bit, but. I'm excited to see how these ice powers work. Oh, yeah. There was quite the discussion on Twitter today about it as well, just how people were not quite sure if stasis or ice is a good representation of the dark or if the dark can even have powers, but yeah. I digress. I wouldn't be surprised if it evolved over time as a class. Yeah, I hope so. I'm hoping we get some rework on our own classes, True. like our normal classes we have yep. now, so... We'll see what happens. I'm sure they have a lot that they're planning on. I had a, uh, I'm going to do a little, little me moment for real quick. Um, there was a Twitter post today by La Monarch about him <laughs> oh, talking I saw to that. Luke Smith. <laughs> yeah. He was t- and he got, con- like, he and Luke Smith had this exchange saying that if, how many, like, retweets and s- silver do I need to have to, to get uh, an ornament and a catalyst for La Monarch? And, Luke said it real low, so I'm hoping that means it's actually coming it's already real soon. Done. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But he said we get two ornaments if he gets a hundred retweets, and we've already hit over two hundred in the last four hours. So it's like I get a new yeah. ornament for my bow. I'm so It'd be excited. so fun. Yeah, it's just it has it's one of the few that don't right now. It's so. one of the only ones from uh, Black Armory that Black don't, because Ar- all mm-hmm. the other ones do, I believe. Yoden yeah. does. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for that toaster to show up on the bungee store. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that is going to be amazing. Yeah. Didn't it do the symbol would... on it, too? Like in a dark I hope so. I would have hand. to. Yeah. It, it can't be a Yoten without the hand. <laughs> All right, Blue. That kind of wraps up my little section a little bit. Do we have any special announcements from Lore Network or anything? No, uh, just a reminder, you know, to, to keep an eye out. Um, 
uh, and I think WordPress you can subscribe, so you can definitely get those posts every week when we put up the uh, weekly roundups for podcast, and then also for YouTube uh, channel or YouTube videos. Um, this week, I know we had some a good mix of cyberpunk, and I believe Warframe was in the mix there. And I know that um, I think I saw Wicked was going to be starting to work on some Warhammer. Uh, stuff yeah. so i know i'm i'm actually kind of excited to see where that's gonna take um me too uh other than that just just uh you know general reminder please give us any feedback that you have either uh you know over on itunes if you haven't already sent a review over there or you can shoot us an email at focusfirechat at gmail.com or use the contact uh, link over on the lore network.com uh either either way all those come to green and i so we will we will see it um, and we appreciate all the feedback that we have gotten up until this point. Uh, it, it just basically it keeps helping us get better at doing all the shenanigans. Um, I'm trying to think. I can do a quick announcement here at the beginning of the show, and even though I normally leave it till the end. Yeah, do it. Go for it. I am working on a new podcast that's going to be added to our channel feed, or it's it's going to be added to the lore network, but it's actually going to be its own feed and it's going to be called destiny lore audio file. And it is something I have been working on in the background for about a month now. And I am recording destiny lore as it's written. There's no commentary. There's nothing else going on. It's basically a performance of the lore as read by me or anybody else who is joining me on this one. I know Wicked and Raz were working on a few things. I know that Infested Potato has given me permission to use some of the other books that we've had him record in the past. So looking forward to getting that out there for you guys to make it a little easier for you to access the lore if you're on the road. So you don't have to be looking stuff up in your phone or you're playing the game and you want to just have something to listen to in the background and learn a little bit more about the game. That's what I'm making this for. So look forward to that. It's not up yet. We're getting there. It's real close. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And the first video is going to be the baby hive. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) With Blue as special guest. (laughs) Reading the lyrics. Be sure to vote for it. I I laughed so hard when I watched that. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. For... I'm not gonna lie. It took me a couple takes to get through it without breaking down <laughs> laughing. Yeah, especially as a father to two small children oh, yeah. who are mm-hmm. totally into that. Yes, mm-hmm. I I thought that was great. Yeah, even Julie loved it. She thought it was hilarious. <laughs> but uh, that is actually on the community page on Bungie right now. So if you Head over there. It's called Viral Chant, and I will make sure Blue puts it in our show notes or in the notes for it to go on the podcast. And I'm going to retweet it again here pretty soon and just go over there. If you could put a, a little vote up there for us so we see if we can get a movie of the week, that would be very appreciated. All right, Blue, are you ready to jump into things? I am. I'm going to take a, take a quick commercial break and then jump right into it. Yep, we can do that. Awesome. Are you worried you don't have all the answers? Have you ever found yourself in an internet rabbit hole? Call Call Mystery Mystery Time Time Live Live today. Today! It's a new detective business. With plenty of heart. And a questionable track record. We're only in the office for an hour. Every Wednesday. Come hang out. Solve a mystery. It's a podcast. It's a live show. It's a swell time. Subscribe Subscribe now. now! The producers of Mysteries High Life asked me not to take the advice for guidance of the host because they have no idea what they're doing. No Mysteries High Life can be fully solved. And that's individualized for any of the source or sheer fun. You can find them live on the Twitch app and find their podcast later on YouTube, Anchor, Spotify, Google, and iTunes. Listening may have hurtled your death or lost a sin. We are sorry. This is probably legally binding and you cannot do it. And we're back. So real quick for just some what we've started to call the cocktail knowledge segment. Um, the... The ex- their description of Titan that we got from way back, and I think it might still be up on the website, um, but it's it reads, The great monuments of mankind's utopian golden age now lie toppled or half-submerged within the rolling ocean that blankets the entire surface of Titan. 
All that remains is a flotilla of construction barges and a lone human habitat that serves as the perfect hiding place for some of humanity's scattered forces, and some far more sinister below. So that's that's kind of the intro that we get from Bungie to Titan. Now, there's a few discrepancies that we I, I do want to call out real quick, because I've seen this um, kind of mentioned a couple times as a potential conflict of lore uh within the community over on reddit um so first off we are playing a science fantasy game so we have to put into suspension some of the facts that we have either just recently uncovered or that we have about titan um titan in reality is the largest moon of saturn it is actually the second to largest moon in our solar system interestingly enough it's actually larger than mercury uh, so that's kind of put it in perspective there. Um, and among the over 150 moons that we know about in our solar system, Titan is the only one with a substantial atmosphere and is the only place beside Earth to know that we know has liquids in the form of rivers, lakes and seas on its surface. Um, so there's a there's a call out there real quick. In reality, Titan is not a solid ocean. It actually is pretty it's, it, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty similar to Earth. It has dry areas on it. Um, as far as the atmosphere, uh, another thing that a lot of people have made comments about because Sloan, like standing in her, her watchtower mm-hmm. without her helmet. Um, she does have a lore reason for that. Well, she also can actually do that because the atmosphere is made mostly of nitrogen similar to Earth's. Now, the big difference here is that it's pressure is 50% higher than Earth's. And so to kind of put that into an example, if, uh, and and they did this as kind of like an example, say, say a raindrop falls on Earth and the same exact raindrop falls on Titan. Um, if you assume that the raindrop is falling at 20 miles per hour on Earth, it's basically going to, it's, the calculation would state that it's about going to, it's going to fall roughly six times slower on Titan. So it'd be only falling at 3.5 miles per hour on Titan. However, a lot of the Hmm. rain that does occur on Titan is about 50 to 75% larger than Earth's. So a raindrop, you know, here on Earth is really tiny. It's just, you know, it's just a drop over on Titan. It's going to be significantly larger. You're going to get hit by snowballs, essentially. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, And yeah, and that's actually probably not too far from the truth because it's freezing. Like it is cold over there. Um, But to so I think the uh, the, so, yeah, the air on Titan is dense enough that you could walk around on the surface without a spacesuit. You don't need a spacesuit. However, you do require an oxygen mask and protection from the weather uh which is a balmy negative 290 degrees fahrenheit or negative <laughs> oh, wow. 179 degrees celsius so you know it's warm as warm as everything over there um so yeah so like technically you can't like you're i mean other than the cold which will freeze your skin um if you can get past that uh you don't need a spacesuit you don't need that the the air is actually the air and atmosphere are dense enough to to actually <laughs> chat it's a bit nippy yeah just 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 a little bit <laughs> just a tiny um but i want to go back it's so it's not a solid ocean it, it does have clouds it has rain it has rivers lakes and seas uh the surface seas are actually liquid hydrocarbons so we do see that on uh in game uh it is going to be methane and ethane uh those are going to be the liquid hydrocarbons that a lot of the seas are made of however uh, and we do have mention of this in the lore book, uh, but there is believed that underneath a thick crust of water ice, there is actually believed that there is more liquid. And furthermore, the interesting thing about that is that that part, that under that sub ocean is actually theorized to be water, not methane, which would be really, really interesting because that's where some of the uh, if Titan were to have life, that would be where entities similar to what we are familiar with would would exist um and this is not to say that there can't be life on the surface lakes or seas it would just be that the chemistry of those creatures would be much much more alien to us because because um they would have to exist within an environment that is completely foreign to us um 
Another note real quick, Saturn and Titan are located roughly 10 times further away from the sun than Earth. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty far. And a single day on Titan, so a, a single rotation on Titan, is the equivalent of 16 Earth's days. And the reason why that is is because Titan is basically tidal locked with Saturn. So what that means is that the same side of Titan will always face Saturn. And it takes roughly 16 Earth days for the moon to rotate around Saturn, which also is rotating around the sun. So that, that correlation of rotations equals it, it basically takes roughly 16 Earth days for the sun to kind of go the whole way around. Um, hmm. it's, it's Yeah, so that's really interesting. Still faster than Venus, which takes a whole it, year. Yes, yeah. which is which is an interesting, interesting little thing. And actually, I think um, I remember doing some look on the moon as well because the moon is I think it's like one point three six times or something. It's something weird, but they actually have it. Uh, they have a calculator online. I can't remember where it was that I found it, but you could type in different planets, and it would be like one day is equivalent to you know, whatever on Earth days. It was for uh, people who were writing science fiction uh, to help them nice. kind of like get their head around the fact that, you know, hey, when you say day, that's a Earth day, not a Venus day or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I mentioned that we do have a lore reason and it is actually thematic to what we're talking about tonight. And Sloane does not wear a helmet because she moisturizes. <laughs> According to I the remember card, reading Sloan this. Overseer. Uh huh. It's in the new book, Duress and Egress. It's great because she has this pilot talk back to her and she's all huffy because I moisturized short, short timer. She, came, she became Jersey all of a sudden. Short timer. I just like the fact that she yeah. instantly gains respect for the pilot because he back talked her. Mm hmm. She's a Titan. Wait. Uh. <laughs> So yeah, um, I just I, I wanted to call a couple of those points out because I know um, a lot of people are like, oh well, why is it solid ocean? And you know, there's a lot of different conversations about how that could have happened. Um, and I'm I'm not going to really weigh in because I have no idea. Um, I was I just kind of all have always chalked it up to it's you know authors like they're just taking artistic. Liberty. Liberty and mm -hmm. saying, hey, it's going to be a solid ocean because why not? Um, I mean, and we might we might eventually get an explanation. I know there was one theory that it was because of the way that the scissor G kind of affected it pulled the earth or pulled the moon when it did the, the wave. Um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that one because I the way I read the last days of Croc and Mare, it was our it, it seemed like it had already been an ocean. Like, it seemed like it was already a solid ocean. Um, that was just how I read that, so I don't I don't know about that. But um, I mean, they go under... Right, under well, and I, I guess right the ways. argument that you could make is that the, the arcology that we see and that is taking place in Kraken Mare could have theoretically only been in one of the oceans. It didn't... It, it never specified that the plant, the moon as a whole, was covered in methane. Like it never okay. specifically called that out, so I I, th I see a bit of wiggle room there if they do want to go back and clarify that, which I, to be fair, they don't really need to. Um, mm -mm. So, but I, actually, speaking of the last days of Crack and Mare, uh, we did an episode kind of taking apart that book uh, that was back on episode one hundred ninety four. I will also link that in our show notes there. Um, but that's that's uh, pretty much like the beginning of what i would say is a good foundation to look at um i know we're going to talk a little bit about you know the who and the where i think is the the next two points that you wanted to to tackle mm -hmm. and ted would you like to take the honors of that one talking about who's on titan and where what what are the names on titan and how what kind of goes on in those places sure um so Obviously, the world vendor is Sloan. That's your main point of contact there. Um, some of the enemies that you find on Titan are Cargill, who's the hive wizard in the Methane Flesh Lost Sector. And then you got Golmut, who's the hive ogre in the cargo bay, also known as Greg. 
Then you have <laughs> Fan Hole. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out, time out. <laughs> Who is Greg? That's the ogre. Why? Yeah. I've, right, but that's Greg. How? I, Story. That's, <laughs> that's his name. Story time. That's he was he was the easy uh ogre to go and uh find DPS numbers uh for different weapons before <laughs> season of opulence came out and his name was turned from Golmut to greg because it was easier good old greg <laughs> like it <laughs> he seems a little bit yeah, friendlier thanks. than fred the the phalanx who boops you off of kate's stash oh mission. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah so we've got randall fred and mm-hmm. greg um, Greg has thus turned into the the ogre that you can summon in the tribute hall. So since ah. he just stands there. But before that, it was the the cargo bay <laughs> ogre. So <laughs> especially back in the in the farming of uh, oh the faction wars stuff. Yeah, that was an easy one to do. Yeah, yeah. We do have a new addition to all the different characters that have alternate names wicked has found this harpy on io that is not an enemy harpy it is a blue harpy it will not it won't harm you it's not part of any mission it's not part of any story (laughs) really he has dubbed it bob Bob. and it is bob Bob the friendly harpy there you go (laughs) bob the friendly what else do you call a floating killer pet (laughs) (laughs) Makes me think of Bob from uh, Dredgen. Oh, yeah, the head, the skull. Yeah. <laughs> There's a new one coming out soon. Oh, no. I need to catch up. Mm-hmm. So Anyways. So we've, we've done Golmoot, or Golmoot, <laughs> yep. or Greg. Greg. <laughs> Greg. Yep. Classic Greg. And then you've got Thon Hul, who is the knight in the uh, DS Quarters 2 Lost Sector. You've got Karlog, the Unliving, who is a Hive Knight in the Deathless Adventure. And the main forces that are on Titan are Fallen, Hive, and Taken. Um, other people you run into in some of the adventures is Mithrax. He's the Fallen Captain Enemy in the Enemy of My Enemy World Quest, which you see him later on in other locations as well. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, Mithrax has a different colored uh mark because essentially the the fallen have marks rather than cloaks i guess they have cloaks too but his on titan i believe is blue yeah it's like a dark and, blue yeah and it's he's actually not named as mithrax he's just the fallen captain we find out later in the story and that's if but, you yeah. side and decide to help him because that's that's a choice right yes it is yeah which makes it very confusing if you killed him first <laughs> right so it's kind of not a choice, but which I think is. arguably is why they probably didn't name it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. But locations on Titan. Yep. So location wise, we've got Sirens Watch, which is the landing zone, which has sinking docks and the methane flush lost sector in it. Then you've got your middle part, which is the rig, which is also the landing zone, which has the cargo bay where good old Greg is in the DS quarters. And then you've got the big old solarium there. Um, which has the arbor I don't even know how to say that arbortum Bortum. arbortum which is with the chasm of screams which is the strike location the festering halls and then you've got the two crucible maps pacifica and wormhaven that also take place on titan which i love pacifica it is my f- one of my favorite maps because no one expects a bow on that map because it's <laughs> such a shot <shot-hunter's> map <laughs> Pacific is the above jerk. round one, right? Yeah, it's the one that has two layers where B is inside and you have two levels right next to B that you can play it's on. It's the one right, that yeah. B then... is the grinding machine. Yeah, yep. it really is. Yep. The meat grinder. But yeah, it's so good. Wormhaven, it's good Wormhaven's map. the other one that B just gets into a, it just turns into a hamburger machine. <laughs> like. That, yeah, it's got yeah. a circle. It's more yeah, of a circular. Yeah, uh, Warmhaven's the one that has like the the plants on one side and the hive junk on the other yeah. side, and yeah. then B is in right. the middle of the base thing. Mm-hmm. It's just like Heavy's everyone, just everyone just goes B. into B to die. <laughs> like, it's just... They can't possibly keep throwing grenades in this hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my watch. <laughs> 
I just love <laughs> how Blue will use Wish Ender on that map because no one expects oh, to just walk around the it's corner. It's so and much be- fun to play hide and seek <laughs> with that thing. It's like it's like Hello. and hi. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. so the armor set that's tied into titan is the lost pacific set and that is something that this is one of the things that i would say you need to go and get before november just co- complete your collection if you're a completionist just go and do it there's some really interesting little bits of lore on it but the lost pacific set pretty basic naming convention all across it's lost pacific mask helm helmet grips gauntlet gloves vest and so on and so forth so nothing surprising on that part but we have a little bit of a throwback to the last days of kraken mare with dr shanice pell and she has quotes on all of the all the pieces except for the class item in the first section in the head she says i need more data and put the lab on yellow alert on the arms, she says, send a deep space probe towards the anomaly. I want to know what it is. The probe's initial data makes no sense, and the signal died. What have we found? That's on the body. This research has has to get out, even if I don't. People have to know what this anomaly is. That's on the legs. And then at the very end, the class item, Sloan has a little thing. says, Sloan has these golden age spacesuits repurposed for guardian armor. So... In a lot of ways, this Lost Pacific items, armor pieces, actually set up the story of the what we came to know as the last days of Kraken Mare. I think they were, in a lot of ways, probably the inspiration behind it. Wouldn't you say that's probably a fair assessment, Blue? Because mm. these have been in the game since the beginning Yeah. of D2. Yeah, and I think the connection to the, um, uh, was it Revelation? That Pell also showed up in. Yes, uh, on the moon. Yeah, that was that was the connection that always like as soon as that came up, I was like, "What?" Like that was where I connected the anomaly. Personally, that's where I connected the anomaly too. Was mm-hmm. with the information because then that also ties into I think what you were saying with the last days as why Rasputin brought the hammer down so hard on what they were trying to do because she had. Uh, Shanice had information that had been quarantined on the moon that she was going to try to um, t- spread, and because it was a vi- it was a um, a contagion basically because of what we saw with the data doing it on the moon, Rasputin was like basically basically he inf- he enforced a-, a quarantine because he didn't want it to get out because of all the other trouble that they were having. He's like, and I don't need that sure. running around. There is one other item. Yeah. It's the Cape of Last Departure. It's a hunter item, obviously, since it's a cape. And you get that one from completing the methane flush. And I think it's a blue, isn't it? Yeah, it was... I don't even think it's available anymore because it was back with uh, the factions. It was one of the faction items. It was for the uh, Dead Orbit... uh, it was one of their or it was one of their ornaments that was actually you you got it as part of the dead orbit set um so i'm not sure i don't think that particular ornament is even available anymore because i think it was like i said i think that was from because didn't we have like a faction it was a faction rally back a while back wasn't there right when they did yeah. the new banners because they had like the I um remember. the basilisk kind of out that salty yeah. time in the community yeah, it was it was like the basilisk was this dead orbit, and then because new new monarchy got like a really they they had a really cool they they redid the logos of the mm-hmm. the factions, and it was during that time that you could get the cape of last departure ornament. That was when dead orbit had the green and the is it yes, the which snake I in there? yeah the basilisk snake like I, yeah. I really I really still like that particular imagery that they have with that one. Yeah, those were good shaders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and actually, speaking of aesthetic stuff, uh, real quick, um, well, I guess, do you want to take a breather before I jump into one of my favorite a- aesthetic aspects? The thing that you actually like to chase in games? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, as, we as impossible as impossible as some of them are to chase. <laughs> yeah, let's do it just a little bit. So quick commercial break we'll be right back and we will tackle the emblems 
should introduce myself. Um, I'm Corin Black, a humble half-demon, and folks around Baltimore call me the Devil's Runt. Here we go, finally moving again. How do you feel about methamphetamines? You know, devil's blood don't make you a devil. Under the Shroud. Fantasy, noir, and horror from Baltimore's sin-soaked streets. Find creator Ian Humphrey on Twitter at Fictional Ian. And we're back. So, like, I, I love the emblems because they have so many different components within them that are just really cool. Um, so the emblems that are specific to Titan, uh, we have a couple that are uh, going to call out the Arcology. So we have Arcology Interface. Uh, this is uh, a general emblem. Uh, you actually got this um, from one of Cade's treasure map stashes, and I can't. I don't think there was a specific one that you got that from. I don't. I don't believe. Um, but it was. It's just connected to the arcology. Um, the next one up is an open world emblem, uh, and this is one that you got from completing activities or just ranking up with planetary vendors. Which open world emblems? That's usually how you get them. This one was Cargo Bay Cross. It was a. It's a pretty cool one. Um, then we have New Pacific Access, and then my favorite. Favorite is the New Pacific Arcology, and the reason why I like this particular open world emblem is this is one of the few emblems that actually has variations. Um, so, New Pacific Arcology originally, back way, way, way back at the beginning of D two, was originally called the Lost Sector of Titan. Um, that was us- that was actually the original primary. However, after update one one point one point three, they moved Lost Sector of Titan, which is the it's the it's the lost tech, uh, lost sector symbol. Um, they moved that one to be a variation of New Pacific Arcology. Um, mm. That variation is called Golden Age Tarnished. It's, it's a really I really like that particular one. Um, you also have the variation called Utopia Lost, uh, Sloan's Watchtower, and Hive Infestation. Um, now the fun thing about this one is that these are all going to be open world emblems and they all are you they're unique but they're also the same as all the other destinations all the other destinations in destiny 2 have the same logos the color palette is going to be different for each location and the names are also different so this is the new this is the titan variation it is usually a uh, a combination of different shades of blue it's really i, I seriously one of my favorite ones um the other emblem that's really cool is sabathun's song uh this one also has variations um but this is a uh emblem that is attached to the nightfall variant of the strike that is available on titan sabathun's song um when you first complete the nightfall you will get the base emblem which is just referred to as sabathun's song um, if you go back and rerun the nightfall for there's a specific there's a specific threshold and I don't I can't remember what the threshold is but because nightfalls have the ability to set scores on them once you hit a certain threshold these different variations of this emblem will unlock uh, those variations are search and rescue watcher from beyond and then finally praxic fire and all of those are uh, they also kind of tend to be around the same uh, very colorful very ornate looking of the Savathun songs emblem uh chat's telling me that it is a hundred k nope now they're arguing i don't know oh <laughs> it, it used to be a hundred k 20 um, okay black flag says 25 50 and 100k for the different variations of the nightfall which would i would yeah that would make sense that makes sense so yeah but i i I really like some of these these emblems because you don't even realize that they have variations unless you hit uh, on Xbox, it's Y, and you can open it up. And when you open it up, it has a completely different sub-menu than the other just like, they're not even normal, but like most emblems will just have, you know, oh, this is just that. Uh, the new, um, new Pacific Arcology and then the Nightfalls will have, if you hover over them, they'll have the option to open it up and you can actually change that. That's how you change the emblem. So it, mm-hmm. it just, you can do that with like the crucible one mm-hmm. and the gambit as well. Uh, yeah. If, um, any, any of the emblems that have the variations underneath them. Yeah. It's just really cool. Nice. 
do you want to get into the weapons and the last couple of collectibles you can get from yeah. uh, Titan? Awesome. Ted, go for that one All for right. us, please. So, um, from Savathun's Song, you can get Duty Bound, which is the auto rifle, and that has, uh, it's got Sloane's little badges on it and then it's got Mm -hmm. like this blade coming out of the front of it and like most things on titan it's that kind of powdery blue um i have never got this weapon and i'm kind of sad about it yeah i've done the nightfall countless times at this point i think my Mm -hmm. my friends who i play it with have got it at least three or four times and it seems to be duty bound and horror's lease that I can just never get. It's just not not in my future. <laughs> apparently, I'm waiting on the. I'm waiting for the uh, rocket launcher from Mars. Yeah, in one of the Mars the nightfalls. Uh, mm-hmm. That's my last it. thing for Wayfair. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So it's got um, some more to it. Uh, where it looks, I think it's Sloan. Who says, mm-hmm. due respect, Commander, I was there when the Hive found us on Earth. I was there when we stopped them on tight, and I'll be there when we wipe them out. I like Sloane. Yeah. She's a R- Really? So, I think... <laughs> I, think <laughs> I believe, is, is, uh, isn't is she the one that is the source of the argument of the uh, the most attractive... Took us? Took us, yes. yeah. She has the best took us. <laughs> <laughs> for our, all of our young listeners so yeah. i can't say the other stuff <laughs> ask your parents what took us is. they will thank us titan later. <laughs> titan is one of my favorite locations i'm so sad that it's leaving because Me i'm too. a huge alien and aliens fan mm-hmm. all of this just screams <laughs> that like sloan is ripley yep sloan I can, is ripley I can see that. And this is all, like, interacting and playing, like, Aliens, the second movie. And oh, yeah. I am there for it. I'm just so sad that it's it's going away with Beyond Light. But I am more than 100% certain it will be back once the Witch Queen comes out. And I think it we'll will see. be different. We will see. Uh, did you guys see my video I posted on Twitter the other day? I had lured an unstoppable... Uh, phalanx into her <laughs> yeah I saw that and it was, it was continually trying to bash her off the thing and she's just sitting there talking to it like it's nothing like, it's like I want her armor <laughs> I don't care I'm a hunter I want her armor but, yeah. uh, it would be kind of cool to have those shoulders so. um, yeah mm-hmm. so there's pads. One, one of the ghost shells that, that pop up i believe it's a green it's the yeah it's Saturn. from way at the beginning yeah yeah so if you've seen it it's probably been a long time um again it's just kind of that that blue um then there's some jump ships you get the dsv hugens hugens nine yep. hugens nine hugens 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 all right and that's nautilus class aero sub Designed to move easily between methane submersion and low atmosphere flight. So for Titan specifically. And then uh, you can grab some shaders, the new Pacific Sink and Pacific Rush, uh, both of which have worn variants. They are um, blue, blue and blue. Mm-hmm. Titan's blue. Mm-hmm. It's a good it's color. Blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, real quick on Hugens. Hugens has a couple different, uh, like, points of fact uh first off uh christian hugens was a huge name he said he was a dutch physicist mathematician astronomer and inventor and as that list kind of implies he is um by quite a few people regarded as one of the greatest scientists of all times uh he was a huge proponent and a huge figure within uh the scientific revolution um and as an astronomer he's actually chiefly known for his studies on the ring of saturn and the discovery of 
Titan. Um, Hugens is also nice. the uh, atmospheric entry probe that they actually successfully landed on Titan back in 2005. Uh, that was the ESA, the European Space Agency. So that there, there's a bit of connection between that. And then also the description of that particular jump ship is that it's a um, Nautilus class. And it's described as an aero sub, which I think is really cool. So... Are we ready for ghost scans? Yes. Ghost scans are going to be fun. Yep. So on Titan, there are 20 different ghost scans. They are all over the place, anywhere from just patrol zones to missions. And I put them in order by location, which is kind of nice. I'm going to do five of them, and then we're going to kind of switch off a little bit. But I'm just going to read through them. Uh, Ghost scan one, which is on the rig and Titan, is Skolas tried to unite the fallen houses but failed. Who would have thought that sheer desperation would succeed where he failed? Which is a nod towards the fallen houses actually kind of sort of coming together a little bit towards the end after everybody has nearly been defeated under Aramis. Then you have the in the rig again. Shipping manifestos? Hmm. Looks like they traded frequently with the settlement. Wow. Way out there. It's called Hyperion. Huh. <laughs> little nod. <laughs> Anybody want to throw in the little nod to Hyperion? They have horses made out of diamond. I don't know why you would trade with them. Oh my god. <laughs> Borderlands reference. <laughs> I was not expecting that blue. I was not expecting that from you. <laughs> Handsome Jack. May he rest in pieces. May he rest in pieces. <laughs> uh, third scannable on the rig. The fallen need servitors to provide them with ether unless they found a replacement like Siva. Gosh, I hope there's no Siva on Titan. So that used to be a small thing of debate whether or not the uh, SIVA actually made it to Titan as well. We've kind of sort of found out that since it's more of a colonization thing on Titan, theoretically it could be, but there was no ever, ever no instances that we know of. Uh, in the rig number four, yet another strain of Hive. They're doing an awful lot of testing out here, trying new things with magic and uh, breeding. <laughs> <laughs> There's a running theme on Titan yeah. with the Hive, and it's not... It's not it's not breeding. Let me make that clearer first thing. <laughs> it's the experimentation. The hive like to uh, try a lot of different things. And we're going to see that in the advanced episode when we get into the adventures in particular. And the fifth one that I have for the rig is the idea was that the facility produced zero waste. Everything organic ended up fertilizer and everything else got used in manufacturing. Grand plans that didn't pan out. A little bit more of kind of the ecology of Titan, or at least the intention for the ecology of it. Blue, you want to get the sinking docks? Yeah, so sinking docks uh, has also five. Uh, the first one is a Golden Age console, and a user is still logged in. Lilani Valero, Marine Tech number 426. She was in the middle of logging an emergency of some kind. Uh, so there's, a, I think that... I kind of took that as a nod to one of the things that happened in the last day's lore book. Um, The next one is the gravity on Titan is at approximately 1.352 meters per second squared, except here. These floating rocks must be a residual effect from some hive magic. I'm trying to remember where that was. Is that... That guy, it's the floating rock. If you go into um, sinking docks, there's like this... The command oh, center area. Oh, yeah. And you go okay. Down, okay. And then you yeah. go through a little hallway, and it's the little glowing orange yeah, rock. Okay. I, as soon as you go mm, into the next Right, room. right, right. Um, so then the next one is it's a cocoon of some kind. The life inside it isn't exact, isn't hive exactly. This could be how the hive symbiotic worms grow. So that's fun. Um, the next one is screen's <laughs> dead, but the feed's still running. Ooh, kind of a catchy jingle. New Pacific Arcology, the next frontier is you. <laughs> Do you remember the opener I did for the Titan episode way back when? The do 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 the power one? I yeah. I think I have uh-huh. it somewhere. I did the the Arcology. <laughs> we actually did a Welcome to the Lost Pacific. I, just, uh, I, have to look I just like sometimes. ghosts is like, oh that's kind of a catchy jingle. <laughs> 
Uh, the next one is ghosts being very judgy. Um, the Arcology's operating system isn't very smart. Nothing even close to an AI. Lots of entries here, different names. It may not have had a personality, but it made a living. It made living here better for a lot of people. So that thing is not nearly as smart as I am, is what Ghost is saying. But then fails to open a well, door. Yeah. <laughs> it was just programmed to do what it was doing. <laughs> I'm sure that the AI with no personality on Titan could open that door. Mm -hmm. But let's figure out Festering Halls. Ted? So the second one you can find in Festering Halls, uh, these hive spawn pods are different from the ones we saw before. Maybe a different brood or a different generation? Gross and confusing. (laughs) Back to that experimentation you were talking about. We have only one brood technically on titan right like we had the that we've seen we have the right the base brood and then we had the knight with the experiment that's in the adventure the deathless adventure but he's technically still part of the same brood mm-hmm. i think i don't think there's any other aspects to him beyond that i don't know yeah. they had a lot of open threads i think in titan that they didn't pull and these dialogues definitely gave us a chance to see that. Which is why I think it, when it comes back, it's going to be a lot. I hope so anyway. Crossing my fingers. Hopefully. The third one you can find in Festering Halls. You've got a couple different options depending on if you're a veteran or not. So the veteran dialogue goes, We saw this rune before. On the Dreadnought, it means either doorway or treasure or chamber. Perhaps the Hive used this room to tap into their throne world dimension. And then you've got the non-veteran dialogue, which goes, Hive runes draw their power from different dimension, where there's no difference between a word and its meaning. When the Hive erode the barrier between our dimension and theirs, the rune for death brings literal death, which is always I like fun. the, yeah, I like the non-veteran dialogue, and not just here on Titan, but just in other places, because you get a little bit more simplified information, mm-hmm. I think, rather than things they assume you know. Right. There's a there's a particular thing that happens on IO when you're running the first mission for the Taken. Ikora explains what the Taken are, which is brilliant. Like, thank you for doing that. Like, just just thank you. Instead of just being like, oh, these are the Taken that we saw back. In-. It's like, yeah. no, people don't know what the Taken are. They didn't read the lore books. Yeah, There were books. <laughs> Grimoire, whatever. <laughs> we have books. There's three of them. Yeah. Book of Sorrows. Anyway, Abortum. Abortum, the first one there, uh, reads, The screen is broken, but the data flow is intact. It's streaming some kind of commercial, talking about all the wonders of living in the new frontier of humanity. Yeah. (laughs) Just another cheeky to the commercialism that it seemed like Titan seemed to have. Yep. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's definitely got like a a Wayland-Yutani vibe, for sure. Come here, it's all great. There's no monsters. Definitely no monsters here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they're, the only thing that they had on record of quote-unquote being a monster on Titan at the time was the Leviathan was known to be around. And then there were also the little sea creatures. Blue, do you remember what those were? The divers? They used to swim with them. The divers? Yeah, the divers went... The serpent yeah, one, but the not divers, the worm one. Right, the... the well, the, yeah, the serpent leviathan that you can see out by the uh, Siren's Watch mm-hmm. over by Sloan. That was there apparently before the collapse happened. Yeah, because there was a, there's a, is... um, I think, what was it? Uh, oh, you're going to get that one uh, on Siren's Watch. There's a console there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I guess my question on, well, I'll, I'll ask it when you get there. Um, but the only other subaquatic entities that have mentioned are the divers which are not really ever explained as what they are they kind of seemed like they were like either like a squid or like a even like a dolphin type thing but they didn't seem the need to come up and breathe because they were Mm -hmm. caged underneath the water so ted i gave you my favorite scannable it's the (laughs) The number two (laughs) Yeah, right. oh, no, no, number three, number three okay. is my favorite, but uh, Titan number two, go ahead. Number two, this looks like a camera. I wonder if 
No, the data is all corrupted, as if the operating system has short-term memory loss. It forgets what it sees a few minutes after it happens. Well, no, duh, we took the CPU out. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably not what happened, but that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> we took it out, and we put it in a tank. <laughs> this is true. Well, or what would right. be? What would be a tank? E all right, my favorite one. All right. The one that is a continuous gag now. <laughs> Number three. The, the arboretum crop yields 20 tons of palm figs, 12 tons of kiwi cumbers, 12 tons of pineapples. Pine apples? What a weird idea for a fruit. I love that one. <laughs> I love how that has become a running gag with Pine Aries now, too. Apples? Apples? Pine apples? <laughs> <laughs> I actually really want to try a, a kiwi cumber. No. Because that sounds that sounds pretty good. No, not gonna. Lie. I don't know if it'd be much yes. different since they're both very watery. Right, but it would be a giant kiwi in my mind. Like it would oh, be I see. a, a long <laughs> like, like just kiwis I, are never I, enough. I, like, I, in the I, I pictured thing, honestly, yeah. I pictured it the other way. It would be a very <laughs> short, a short, fuzzy cucumber. cucumber. <laughs> I mean, they have short cucumbers. You can get those guys. That's not new. <laughs> It'd almost be I like wanna, a I spider wanna... leg at that point, like a big, long, <laughs> hairy cucumber. Oh, this is gonna go south. <laughs> you want to talk about sea cucumbers? Oh. They have a really fun. Never mind. Let's move oh. on. <laughs> Last five. Tidal anchor. It seems these flotilla floating stones mark places where the hive have weakened the line between our world and theirs. Bet all the weird magic they have out here comes from sources like this. So just kind of another connection to the Ascendant Realm with the Hive, at least. Uh, title Anchor 2. Looks like the Fallen tried to chain it close. A for effort, guys, but I'm not sure this is <laughs> how we're going to beat the Hive. It's like... <laughs> just like... I just like the way he's like, yep, right you know, here. you know. <laughs> the Fallen tried... My work here is done. <laughs> you can, I mean... <laughs> I've got some chain in the back of my... <laughs> Let's try it. You never know. There you go. I mean, they're really good at generating Maybe... things, so... Yeah, this is true. This is true. We're going to get into that as well in the advanced episode. Siren's <laughs> Watch, our final location. From this co console, a Golden Age technician locked down the shipyard and forbade all future arrival. The entire arcology was undergoing an emergency evacuation. She signed off. I wonder if she made it out. We actually know the answer to that. No. <laughs> she did not. This way to she dash everybody's dreams. Cliffhanger. <laughs> Chat, chat's going, long. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, she did. <laughs> uh, another one on Siren's Watch is the Fallen Antenna. Hmm. The Fallen Houses each used to have their own unique encryption, but now... The codes they're using are all variants of the House of Kings. Dun, dun, have another... dun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A little scary with the Mithrax tie-in there, too. And um, the Aldrin. Last one. That, too. This system used to detect underwater vessels looking to dock here at the shipyard. That's strange. It still works. And it's picking something up. Something below us. And very, very big. So you wanted to ask a question, Blue, about this one? Well, I was just going to say, like, the way that it sounds, it sounded to me like he was picking up something currently. Not necessarily it was picking up something previous. Oh, yeah. But there's there's a mention about the Leviathan in the last days of Kraken Mare because the divers were going down there, too. I swear that they mentioned the Leviathan then. Like, Do they? That is something that I okay. I'm for like I may be remembering it wrong, and because I know like the divers me, but... like Mar Ma, 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 what was his name Mali Mali Mari I can't remember his name uh, Maui no no the guy who went the guy who uh, the very last guy who gets hit by the wave uh, he went down to free the divers. But mm -hmm. and that's kind of what chat chat had mentioned. I think it was Veru had mentioned it in chat that the divers could be a potential like early stage of what we see now. Um, but like there they because they had him in a cage and he was freeing the divers so that they would at least have a chance because the um, the uh, God wave quote unquote was coming. But I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. 
I, I may, it may be just misremembered, but I, I seem to remember. Yeah, and Veru, Veru is mentioned in the. Or sorry, Veru is bringing up the grimoire card about the nine are ancient Leviathan, Leviathan intelligences from the seas of Europa, or the hydrocarbon pits of Titan. Mm -hmm. That could be where I was misremembering it from. But the other thing to remember is that Europa was not terraformed by the traveler. So this neither was creature, Titan. Correct. This creature on Titan was somehow there. Mm -hmm. It was not actually created through the process of the traveler. Correct. Uh, and the reason to go back to the terraform comment real quick, the reason we know that it wasn't terraformed was so from the lore book, we actually get that confirmation. But there also is a um, dialogue from the Arcology AI that's uh, when you're running through the solarium, I Pulling think it is, um, mm -hmm. that says 34% of Titan citizens hope that the, ti that the traveler will terraform the ocean moon soon. So it had not happened at the time of the disaster, which would have been concurrent with the collapse. So obviously it didn't happen. All right. We should wrap this one up. We did go a little bit longer on this one than we have been, but this advanced episode we're going to get into it more of the stories and the missions that we're doing blue do we want to do shout outs i do think we have any other final yeah, thoughts uh i think shout outs would be a good thing um i think we can wrap in on any thoughts from this one in the beginning of the advanced session just to help with the time sure sounds good uh ted do you have any shout outs for us i do not easy enough <laughs> um my shout out <laughs> No. Or actually, actually, yeah. <laughs> My announcement is that next week we will not be recording live. Um, we are actually not recording at all next week. We are taking a small break on the 31st of July. I think that is the date that yep. we were supposed to. It's either the 30th or the 31st. We won't be here next week. But uh, the week after that, Blue and Pens are likely going to be talking about a very recent release of a trailer about Halo Infinite. Infinite? Infinite? Infinite. Infinity? Nope. One Infinite. Of the things? Infinite. Yeah, Infinite. I, I, had it right I always time. confuse it myself. Grappling hook. Yeah. That is all I'm going to say. <laughs> Infinity is the ship. <laughs> that's No, to be fair, that's why I always flip them. I always confuse them. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have to constantly be like, infinite, infinity, you know, infinity's the ship, so it's Halo Infinite. Um, yes, and Brute's throwing grunts, which was a <laughs> hilarious component. Oh, and you can pick up fusion coils, which is so exciting. Um, yeah, actually, that was, that was going to be my, um, thing. Um, if you Let's have, it. no, no, it's fine. Uh, I will never, ever forgive you. Uh, if you have any topics or questions. <laughs> Having face cams makes this so much more entertaining. Um, <laughs> if you have any questions, uh, please be sure, or thoughts on the what we've seen about Halo Infinite. I do really want to hear them, um, and I know pins will as well. So be sure to use, we have not used it recently, but if you guys want to use the hashtag uh, AskFFC over on Twitter or email us any thoughts or questions that you have about it. Um, at focusfirechat at gmail.com. Uh, that would be amazing. We would love to hear, you know, your thoughts, your hopes, your, uh, dare I say, criticisms um, on the the little bit of the trailers that we've seen, the bit of gameplay that we have seen so far. Um, other than that, I think that would, I think that's all I have for that. Um, so just as always, thank you for your time. And until next time, remember, with wisdom we conquer, stand strong, stand tall, and keep exploring. With that, we'll begin to wrap the chat up. Thank you again to those over on Twitch for coming to spend your evening with us. If you'd like to join us for the live streaming of the episodes, please be sure to give us a follow over on twitch.tv slash focusfirechat. Links to all our episode archives can be found at www.thelorenetwork.com. Please be sure to email us at focusfirechat at gmail.com with any comments and or questions for the team concerning the podcast, and let us know how we're doing by giving us some feedback and a rating over on iTunes as well. So until next time, focus your fire, and may your light shine bright. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.